So I think that one of the powerful things that we can do is brainstorm. The first time I went into a dispensary was in California. I went to two different dispensaries. It had like significant um, security surveillance, which, which made me uncomfortable generally because um, it had a physical security presence and then they had a huge technological security camera thing going on and you can see it all. And it was my first time going into a dispensary, so I felt very uncomfortable. One of the things when I went in, there was this almost level of expectation that I was supposed to know what I wanted, know what I wanted, like what was in there, know what I was looking at. Um, and so it took me a bit to orient myself, but in an attempt to like make sure that I looked like I knew what I was doing, like I'd spent a lot of time focusing outside of myself to, to, and not really paying attention to what was actually happening around me. So, I mean, the butt tender talked really fast and it was just, it was a lot. It was a busy Friday night, so it was a lot of people in there. Um, so I really didn't get a whole lot of attention. That same trip, I went to a bigger, more well-known, to me, you probably know them. So I went there and they're a bigger dispensary. I would like to say they're MSO, so multi-state operation. And um, it was a bigger selection. It gave me like Walmart vibes, like the way that they housed their products were very, um, you know, well lit. It was, it was aesthetically pleasing. It wasn't as like overwhelming in a sense, because I felt like I was shopping. You know what I mean? Like I was going shopping for, you know, some clothes. Like that's kind of what it felt like while you were in there. They had all of the products well labeled. Um, so you didn't really have to ask if you read, you could see. Generally, the dispensary experiences are similar. They're just set up differently. Um, you know, you have your edibles, you have your, your concentrates, you have your flour, like you have it all set up. One of the things that I feel like um, I didn't realize early on that I actually just realized a little while ago is that not all dispensaries buy in bulk. Some of them buy prepackaged products. So when I went to one dispensary, I remember um, them showing their bulk products. They had it, you know, on shelves. They had like big bulk areas with like pounds and pounds of weed just on shelves um, and labeled based on um, the flower that they came from or the grower that they came from. And so the process from that was they would have somebody there to literally break up the bud and separate it into the different packaging that you would see. And um, one of the issues that I heard came up was that they have to clean the area where they would break it up. There was like a bleach mixture. And if they didn't let it dry long enough, it could potentially contaminate the product. So for me, that was a red flag. To them, it seemed like, you know, normal processes. That's one of the reasons why some, a lot of dispensaries choose not to do the wholesale option or buy the bulk option. Let's see, the other concern that comes along with dispensaries here is the transition over to a rec program. So the transition over into a rec program, um, it will po potentially increase the volume and we have limited licenses right now. And I didn't read up and see if they're gonna increase the licenses here. But I know we just went to the dispensary around the holidays. They had a whole, you know, when you go to the restaurant, and they got the little buzzer they give you to wait to get in, we got one of them. And so we had to wait for the buzzer to go off before we could get into the dispensary. I wanted to ask, can you say again how you worded, like how having a nurse would be beneficial for the dispensary? So that they, I want to, I've reached out to some dispensaries via email, but I, maybe I wasn't using the right word. Yeah. So I always start off with how I can save money. That's what, usually the first sentence. My name's Ashley. I'm the owner of Cannabis Nursing Solutions. I have an idea that could potentially save you, you know, X amount of dollars because I do my research. Are you paying 60000 for a clinical director salary? I have a way where you can potentially only pay me and get your requirement satisfied, right? So knowing how I can save them money and addressing that on the front end of the sentence and then also saying what they need and then saying how I can help them. And then what I'll say is, you know, if you want to discuss further, go ahead, 
click this link, here's my number, or you know, reply to this email and I'll give you a call so we can schedule some time to meet up. I think that was really helpful because after today, I'm gonna go look at what all the dispensary laws require in New Jersey and New York City. So being able to not only look at it through our lens as a nurse, but look at it through the lens of the people who are experiencing these patients every day, it has been really, really helpful in like just building connection with the dis different dispensaries. So I have, um, and I've probably talked about this a lot, that I found a female all black owned dispensary here in LA and you know, the way that she set it up. It's so sleek and so sexy inside because she made it like 1920s. But what I love about it is that she does classes the first Sunday and every other Monday. And so every chance that I get, I get down to her class and, and just being, you know, in the environment. And, and I mean, she even gave me some of her notes that, you know, that she, you know, reads off of. But I love it because the, very first dispensary that I went to, the butt tender didn't know anything. Like, he's like, well, I mean, you know, and it was just like, oh man, that's scary. You know, like that's scary. Like he doesn't really know anything. Just the way how they set everything up, you know, what you're looking for, what are you trying to achieve? So I found that very enticing you know, because it's like, wow, I would love to come here. There is a, a, a dispensary, like literally right down the street from me. And when I go into it, it just, it just creeps me out. You know, it's like, it, you know, you have to go through the door with the buzzer and stand in line. And every time I go in there, there's somebody different and they don't have enough people answering questions because at, you know, a lot of the dispensaries, people come in and they really just you know, they really want to know, like, I'm having pain or, you know, I'm stressed and they just want to know and they just kind of just give them whatever, you know. So that's been my experience. I mean, I could go down the street around a corner because I'm in L.A., you know, so it's just it's always there. It's always around. But there's some places that I actually even bring people to that, you know, I trust. And that's Josephine and Billy's. So I've had really great experience with that. First time I went to a dispensary, you know, it was fine. There was nothing like super special about it, but one of the really important things to me to see in a dispensary is like, do you have the information available or do I need to go to somebody at the counter to ask some questions? Well, I work in a dispensary, so um, I see a lot of stuff on the daily. Today, I actually had a patient um, I think the one that I did the post on that has the seizures, where well, she came in today, and um, I walked over to her, asked how she was doing, and then she ended up having a seizure on me. Well, she also had to hit her vape pen. So we're in the back of the dispensary. I have like a line of people. She's sitting down having a seizure, and I was like, okay, look, if you do have to hit your vape pen, just blow the smoke in your shirt. So she hit her vape pen and she started coughing. I was like, I didn't say rip it. So she started laughing, but it instantly, you know, calmed her seizure and I was able to get her through. And um, nobody actually noticed that she hit her vape pen, but I smelled like blood all day. But that's my, it's being a butt tender for sure. The thing that we are trying to impact, at least I'm assuming this, is the patients who are choosing to consume, whether it's a patient that, you know, you're serving or if you're the patient yourself. So we have to think about the legacy that we're intended to leave for other people as we do our work. And it's very hard not to compare, but if I had to give you anything that gave you any satisfaction, is to know that most of these people are operating within smoke and mirrors. If you find these conversations empowering, then you may want to join us in the Highline Tribe. We are a community of nurses and healers who are seeking alignment. Try the tribe today for a step towards a transformative journey towards wellness and knowledge. See you on the inside.